Hello and welcome to Volume of Prisms and Cylinders. As we know, prisms and cylinders are three-dimensional objects where the base we have two bases that are congruent and we have a segment, the altitude or height, that connect both of those bases. So, um, anytime we have a prism or cylinder, a volume of one, we are working with a three-dimensional object and we are calculating that three-dimensional space. So the volume is the amount of space of space a three-dimensional object three-dimensional object occupies uh, that's a C occupies occupies s that is measured measured in cubic units. So what this means is, that's a U, um, we are working in three dimensionals, three dimensions. So we, for, for example, we would have units cubed or units raised to the third power, feet cubed or meters cubed, because now we have, we have volumetric space, okay? <clears throat> Volume of a prism. It's kind of like volume of a box. How do you calculate the volume of a box? Hopefully you know how to do this from maybe uh, elementary, elementary geometry. You would first one, let's just draw a box. Dotted lines where we can't see it. So the back, so the back bottom side as well, the, back, uh, the bottom left side as well. And um, hopefully you remember volume of a box or a prism, right, uh, a rectangular prism is just length of times width times the height, okay? So that, there's an even better way to do this, especially for things that are not rectangular. So for, what if our, what if our uh, prism is, let's say, trapezoidal or hexagonal? Well, it's not going to be length times width times height anymore because it's only length times width times height because we could actually take the length and width. And if we pretend this is water, we could fill up this box until the water, until the water fills completely up, uh, fills up the box. And it's just constantly adding that area length times width up until it reaches the, the, the top of the box or multiplying that by however high the box goes. That's where the height kicks in. Now, if it's hexagonal, it's not the same, it's not length times width for the bottom. It's something else. So a better equation for this would be area of the base. So the area of the base, in this particular case, is length times width, and multiply that with the altitude, which is the height. So I'm gonna erase this length times width, just so it's clear. The more important thing to do is identify, just like we did with surface area, what the base is and then where the altitude is. In a rectangular prism, it doesn't quite matter which side's that base, which side's the altitude, but for hexa uh, hexagonal ones, they absolutely does. So let's draw a hexagonal prism next to this. It's gonna be a little bit tough. Drawing a hexagon, six sides, drawing an almost identical one below it and then connect the pieces appropriately. Okay, so this time around, the base is not a uh, is not a rectangle. So what we do is we're going to be calc. We're going to take a rectangle. We're going to fill in the area like it is water, and just like we did in the rectangle example, I'm going to fill this all the way up until it occupies the entire hexagonal prism. So, in order to do that, we need to add, continually add hexagons to it, or just multiply it by however, how, however high the prism goes. So, identify the base. Our base is equal to a hexagon here. And hexagon. And then, Identify the altitude. Altitude connects the two bases. And then we just multiply the area of the base times the altitude. Okay. Now, volume of a cylinder <clears throat> follows the same concept, which is very, very nice. As we know, a cylinder, 
It's much like a prism, except the bases are not, a po are not polygons. They are circles. So that's the big difference. Okay, so let's erase the bottom part, back part that we can't see. And then just like before, we would be adding, if we fill this up with water, we would, be, we would take a whole bunch of circles, fill it all the way up, and it's just constantly adding the area of the circles until it hits the, the peak, okay? So our area, our volumetric equation for a cylinder is still the area of the base, you could still think of it this way, multiply that with the altitude. Even better than that, we know the base is a circle, so the area of a circle times the altitude. Or even better than this, we know the area of a circle is always going to be pi r squared. So this is probably the best version of this. Volume is equal to pi r squared times the altitude. Okay. Once again, we need to identify <clears throat> this is our base. And then here we have our altitude. Now let's actually fill this in and let's, let's, let's calculate with an example. Let's pretend the radius of this is equal to 6 inches. And let's pretend the altitude here is 10 inches. Well, we would then calculate, okay, the, the area of the base or area of the circle. It's going to be pi times 6 squared. Altitude would be 10. 6 squared is 36, so 36 pi times 10, or ultimately the volume is going to be equal to 360 pi. This is measured in inches, and this is cubic units, so cu uh, inches cubed. So there we have it. We need a, it is literally the same concept between them, except their bases change depending. You need to calculate the area of the base. Area of the base times the altitude to calculate the volume of prisms and cylinders. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.